Hello to everyone, this is Yulsi again, the head teacher of PTE Ape Uni. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about summarized spoken text. Many students find it really difficult, and there are a lot of rumors going around making it even more confusing to solve this question. But after this lesson, I'm sure that you will realize SST is actually quite an easy task. So make sure you stick around till the end of this video and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and give me a thumb up for the hard work. Thank you. As usual, this video will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we will learn some basic information of summarized spoken text. And in the second part, we will learn some exam strategies. On the exam day, the exam interface will be like this. You will hear a lecture. The duration of the lecture or the audio is normally between 60 to 90 seconds. Like all other questions with audios in PTE, you will hear the audio only once. And your task is to write a summary of what you've heard. The length of the summary has to be between 50 to 70 words. Notice that this is different from the requirement in SWT. Many students get this confused and lose marks in the exam. So pay attention. The word limit in SWT is between 5 to 75 and in SST is between 50 to 70. The counter at the bottom left corner will show you how many words you have written. Make sure your answer is between 50 to 70 words. The time allowed for each SST question is 10 minutes. The audio time is included in the 10 minute limit. If your time is up, your answer will be automatically submitted and you will be moved to the next question. You can check how much time you are left with at the top right corner. And same as SWT, SST is also individually timed. So, even if you finish this question early, the time allowed for your next question stays the same. It's unaffected. As you can see, there are two boxes on the interface. The top one shows the status and the progress of the audio. The answer box below is where you write your answer. There are three buttons below the answer box, cut, copy, and paste. They can only be used to copy and paste words from the answer box, and you will lose your copied content when you move to the next question. So you will not be able to copy your answer from this question to the next question. There are one to two SST questions in the exam. You have 10 minutes to complete each SST question. Again, it is individually timed, meaning that your answering time in this question will not affect the time allowed for the remaining questions. SST contributes scores to both listening and writing. As you can see from this table, it contributes 6% to PTE writing and another 6% to PTE listening. Now, let's learn about the marking criteria of SST. It is marked in five dimensions, content, form, grammar, vocabulary, and spelling. There are two points in each dimension, so in total, 10 points for each SST question. We'll take a look at these dimensions one by one. First of all, let's see how content is scored. As described in the score guide from Pearson, the requirement of a full score in content is to provide a good summary of the text and all relevant aspects should be mentioned. When one or two aspects are missing, you'll get only one point. And if you omit or misrepresent the main aspects of the text, you will get zero in content. Same as SA and SWT, if you score zero in content, there is no further scoring, which means that you will score zero for the whole question. But what does it mean by misrepresenting the main aspects? How can we avoid getting a zero mark in SST? Don't worry, I will explain this very soon. 
The next dimension is form. It's a very easy two marks to get. In order to get a full mark in form, you have to write between 50 to 70 words. Please remember this well, because it is different from what is required in SWT. In addition to word count, there are three more things to look out for. Any of these three actions will cause you get zero mark in form and no further scoring. First, if your answer is written in all capital letters, you will get zero. Normally, you only have to capitalize the first word or proper nouns in a sentence. Second, if your answer contains no punctuation, you will get zero. Third, if your answer is in the form of a bullet points or very short sentences like, I hear this, I hear that, you will get zero. So make sure your answer is between 50 to 70 words and write a normal standard paragraph. You can then easily secure these two marks in form. The third dimension is grammar. Your answer has to be grammatically correct, with correct grammatical structures. Note that the requirement here is correct, not advanced or complex grammar. And different from SWT, you can write your SST answer in multiple sentences. This means that you should use grammatical structures that you're familiar with, and avoid writing complex and long sentences that you're not confident with in terms of grammar. Next one is vocabulary, which requires you to use appropriate choice of words. The best way to do so is to use the original words you heard in the lecture, because the phrases used in the lecture must be correct. There is no need to paraphrase any word. SST is a listening task. Using the same words from the lecture further proves that you have understood what the speaker was saying. In case you cannot remember the exact words from the lecture, it's also okay to use your own words but make sure you do not make any collocation errors in your answer. Lastly, spelling. PTE is very strict on spelling, very strict. The full marks of spelling is two, and each spelling error will cost you one mark. If you make two or more mistakes, you will receive zero mark for spelling. So always remember to proofread your answer carefully before submitting. Do you notice something? The five scoring dimensions are quite similar to the scoring dimensions in SWT and SA. Out of the five dimensions, four of them actually have nothing to do with listening. Form, grammar, vocabulary, and spelling. They are more related to your writing skills. Only two marks of content has to do with your listening skills. In terms of scoring, SST is actually more of a writing task than a listening task. As long as you're careful with your spelling, grammar, and vocabulary, it's easy to get at least 8 marks out of 10. As for content, even if we miss some points, we can still get one mark. And that makes it 9 out of 10, which is a pretty good score already. We only have to avoid writing irrelevant content. SST is not hard at all. I said SST is not difficult at all, but there are all the rumors going around making it really confusing to determine which is the right method for SST. Here I have listed some questions that I often get asked. First question, will I lose marks if the key points I choose are inaccurate? Second question, Will I lose marks if I use an SST template? Some say that you are not allowed to use any template at all. Using a template will cause you to get zero in SST. You have to write everything in your own words. Is it true? Third question. Can I answer with a template filled with only keywords? This question goes to another extreme. Some say you don't need to care about understanding the lecture at all. Just answer SST questions like retail lecture. You can use a retail lecture template in SST. Fill it with only keywords. 
something like, in this lecture, I heard keyword one, keyword two, and keyword three. Is it really this simple? Does this method work? To answer these questions, we have done many experiments using the Pearson PTE official mock tests. Let me show you the results. We've done four mock tests using mock test C, the latest two hour version. WFT was done in all four experiments. Why? Remember that SST only accounts for 6% in listening. So if we only answer SST, no matter if you score zero or full marks in this task, the score report will always show 10 marks in listening. So we have no way to see which method works and which doesn't. Therefore, in all of these four experiments, we have answered all WFT questions perfectly, getting full marks. And the only difference between these mock tests is how we answered in SST. In the first mock test, we did not use any template in SST and wrote everything in our own words. We have included all accurate key sentences in our answer, making sure that we satisfy the requirements of a full mark in content. We did not paraphrase any words and just used the original words from the audio. As you can see from the score report, we have received 39 in listening and 49 in writing. This is the highest score we get in all four experiments. Then we want to test if the key points we choose are inaccurate. How will that affect our scores? Will we get a zero for content? So in test two, we have randomly chosen key points, missing most of the key sentences from test one. But same as test one, we did not use any template and did not paraphrase any words. In the end, we get 38 in listening, only one mark less as compared to test one. The writing score remained the same. We still get 49. Then we moved on to test what will happen if we use a template in SSD. So in test three, we use the APUNI SSD template in our answer. But because the template itself consists of around 20 words and there is a word limit of maximum 70 words, so we decided to choose accurate key sentences and we deleted some of them to meet the word limit requirements. We answered with fewer accurate key points in this test. Same as test two, we get 38 in listening and 49 in writing. In the fourth test, we tested whether it is possible to answer SST like retail lecture, filling a template with only keywords which I see many students are doing. We have picked out around 20 keywords or phrases from the passage and put them into a template. We get 34 in listening and 45 in writing, which is the lowest in all of these four tests. To make it clearer, I have organized the results of the four experiments in this table. Let's see what conclusions we can get. Obviously, the answer we provided in test one is the model answer, which received full marks. The only difference between test one and test two is that test two picked out inaccurate key points, and test two is one mark less in listening as compared to test one. This proves that you will lose one mark if the key sentences you selected are inaccurate. This is the same as what we discussed earlier. You will lose one mark in content if you miss some key points, but you will still be able to get full marks in the other dimensions if you do well in grammar, spelling, and vocabulary. Now, let's have a look at test three. We have used the APUNI SSD template in this test, number three, with fewer accurate key points, and we lost one mark in listening. This is similar to what happened in test two. If we miss some key points, we will lose one mark in content. So using the template itself will not cause you to lose any mark, but the template will use up a significant portion of the word limit 
and you're left with a lower word limit to write your key points. It's difficult to include all the key points with a fewer or lower word limit, and this is the reason which caused us to lose one mark in content. So, to sum up, you can use the APUNI SSD template, but only use it when you don't have many key points to write. If you have taken down lots of notes, you're still suggested to write without any template in order to get a higher score in content. In the fourth test, we can see a significant loss of marks in both listening and writing. We lost five marks in listening and four marks in writing. It is evident that filling a template with only keywords will cause you to lose many scores in SSD. How does this happen? Because in SSD, the content marks is given by looking for relevant meanings expressing your answer, not by detecting keywords. Even though we have filled so many keywords into the template, none of the sentences in our answer convey any idea or meaning that is similar to the sentences from the lecture. The answer is thus treated as irrelevant in content by the algorithm. We get zero in content, and as you know, if we get zero in content, there will be no further scoring. So we would end up getting zero for the entire question. But why do some people say that this method can still get you full mark in SSD? They normally say that they have used this method in the exam, writing only keywords, and they get 90 in listening. Thus, they claim that this method works. This is a big mistake, a very huge one, and a huge trap also that many people fall into. Why? I will tell you the reason. It's not because they are liars. They may be telling the truth that they get 90 in the exam, but SST is not a major score contributor in listening. It only accounts for around 6% of the marks in listening. And as we all know, the maximum score of PTE is not 90. It's more than that. So even if you get zero in SST, but if you do well in the other tasks like WFD, listening, fill in the blanks, and repeat sentence, you can still get 90 in listening. So getting 90 in listening does not necessarily mean that a particular method works. To sum up, from the four mock test experiments, we can draw three important conclusions about the scoring in SSD. The first one, if the key sentences you selected are inaccurate, you will lose one mark in content. But if you do well in the other dimensions, like grammar, spelling, and form, you will still get an overall good score in SSD. Conclusion number two, you can use the APUNI SSD template but only use it when you don't have many key points to write. If you have taken down a lot of notes, you're still suggested to write without any template in order to get a higher score in content. And the last conclusion is that you should remember, you should not answer SSD with only keywords. You will be scored zero for the whole question. The content score in SSD is given by looking for relevant meanings expressed in your answer, not by detecting keywords. This is different from scoring algorithm in retail lecture. Okay, after knowing the basic information and the marking criteria of SSD, let's go to the second part, learning the exam strategies.